gonna do is this. We're gonna extend, I'm gonna extend these lines here a little bit. Because we're gonna use this as a guide. Now essentially we're gonna be drawing an isometric drawing of a box. It's not really a cube, but just a box. And we're only gonna use 45s, so we're gonna use 90s. So now if we do this, you can actually see the makings of a box. Flip it here, use these guidelines to help us make a box. But we're not only drawing the solid faces or the solid planes, we're also drawing the planes that we know that are inside too. We have to decide what is on the top and what is on the bottom. Right now, without showing proper overlapping lines or proper uh, line weights. We can't really tell which one is the top and which one's the bottom until you make your line weights darker and you make your inner contours darker that you can tell where there's an overlap to illustrate what is further away. Because this drawing, this diagram, doesn't really have any sense of space, it has a sense of space that we can understand form, but not a sense of space that we can understand convergence. It's not until we actually show what is actually overlapping, the planes overlapping, that we can actually see these object lines here that are darker, that puts this face closest to the viewer. Now these have the essence of the, what we've drawn here has the essentials of what a, what a box is. We have all the verticals are parallel to each other. All four verticals are parallel to each other. These lines climbing to the left, all four are parallel to each other. All 45 degree lines um, up towards the right, climbing to the right, these are also parallel to each other. With that, all six sides are represented. It's a 45 degree angle. Okay, so let's do another one in the same way, but let's reverse this one. So again, start with a vertical. Remember, we want to keep our line weights fairly light. We can approach it exactly the same way. So make squares. Using these lines as a guide or as a reference. But again, with this one, let's reverse it. Let's make the bottom, or let's make the, the lower square. The plane that is closest to us.
when you're done with this, we can actually draw a, a standard square. You can use these you can use these as guidelines if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to. <clears throat> oh, using the wrong one. So I'm doing this just using a normal square. It's not, I'm not really using these as a guide at all. But this is gonna be a, a true, or somewhat close to a true isometric drawing. So with this, I'm gonna use my 4590 triangle to create a 30 degree angle this. Actually, I'll do it in the opposite direction so it doesn't um, mess anybody up. I'll flip it around this way. So I'm going to do a 30 degree angle here from every corner. And based on this, I'll create a vertical line here. And then I will wrap this line all the way around connecting all four of those 30 degree lines like so. So this is what we call a true isometric projection. Of a square box. Not a cube, but a square box, meaning the front and back are squares. Is we're gonna create a simple, we're gonna create a couple simple shapes. <clears throat> Now we have a lot of paper. Now some of you guys are working quite small. These, this distance is about an inch and a half or so. Um, it's not, it's not too small. It's not too big. So it's just the right size, but we have a lot of space. Some of you are only working on this, the, like you guys have all four of these in this little tiny space up here, but we have this is only like a third of the distance of the paper. So you guys are kind of working, some of you are working quite small. So be aware of that, that you, you can certainly work larger. All right, so I'm gonna use my 30, 60, 90 on this. I'm gonna create a simple 
a simple shape. Nothing too, nothing too complex at the moment. You can make this as complex as you want, but I would suggest that you keep it fairly simple. So you can get through this exercise because this is going to be one of several drawings that we do. Now as you guys are drawing, if you notice that your pencil is getting dull, it's going to be a very, very good idea that you sharpen your pencil right away. So we're starting off with a real simple shape. But again, you can make this as complex as you want, but try not to um, Try not to uh, overdo yourself. Or overextend yourself. Probably. So anytime we are doing isometric projection, the projection angle is always at 30%. It's a 30, I'm sorry, 30 degree angle. It's always at a 30 degree angle. So that's one of the reasons why we're using a 30, 60, 90. With this one here, I had to use my 45, 90 triangle just to do the square. But then to get the projection angle, I, I literally had to use a 30. So if you guys can look up here really quick, let me show you. Once you have a simple shape, you take your 30 degree angle, which is the thin side of your 30, 60, 90. This is a 30, a 60, and a 90. And from every corner of your simple shape, you're going to project a line. It's, up, it's arbitrary how long the line is. But I am keeping the line very light. And I will eventually make some of them darker as I need to. But I tend to do this just so I can speed through this. This is a, a fairly simple exercise in isometric projection. But be very precise, uh, like for instance with this one, I'm not exactly right on that corner. So I will make an adjustment. Get right on that corner and make my line. Okay, so with this, now I can actually create, now, now that I have my 30, degree, um, my 30 degree lines projected, now I can create 
the other side. We created the front face, but now we need to create the back side of it. And to create the back side of it, you just simply need to start. Let me fix this really quick. There we go. Okay. We simply just need to start drawing our back side. Now, what I usually do is I start off with the base. If you start off with the base, it makes things a lot easier. You can decide how deep into space to go. I'm going to keep mine about this deep. Oh, let me use my red line, my red pencil. So I'm going to keep my lines very, very light. You can see I made this one a little bit too light that you can't, you can barely see it. So it doesn't really matter how long your lines are, you just simply want to make sure that they are long enough that when you actually draw your, your these projecting lines, that you it's long enough that when you create the back side, especially the base, it's going to be long enough that it can actually make a base for it. And so with that, I'm going to go clockwise around. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise, however you want to do it. So I have the base here. Sometimes I actually go clockwise or counterclockwise because this is the face. These faces are actually, I'm actually seeing these faces a little bit easier. So I'll probably do that because it'll be easier to understand. And on, right now immediately I can see that if I were to create this vertical here, I'm actually creating a tangent. So with that, I'm going to fix this and I will probably make it deeper so I don't run into a tangent like that and make an ugly isometric drawing. So I'll make this a little bit deeper like that, that works better. I'll make my lines a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up so I have this vertical, I have this diagonal here that is opposite of this one. Now I've created this vertical here that's the opposite of this one. This is the back side of it. This is a mirror image of the front. Now I need to create a mirror image of this. So now I can take this corner, go to the right, and connect it. So now this is a mirror image of the front. Now I can go vertical from this corner to make a mirror image of this front vertical. Now I'm gonna create a mirror image of this front horizontal. And now this vertical. And I'll continue this process all the way around until I am done. And I see that I forgot this 30 degree angle here. There we go. Now, if you find this challenging, it's supposed to be because this is to help you understand how things work in 3D, even if it's not in perspective yet. All right, so I'm gonna take this corner because I need to create an opposite of this corner or let's say the opposite of this, I'm sorry. I'm gonna create this vertical here, which is gonna be opposite of this one like that. And now I need to create a horizontal here that is the opposite of this one. And now I can bring my vertical down. Now, if I did this right, when I create the opposite of this vertical back here, these two should meet. If they don't meet, then there's something wrong with my drawing and I'm going to have to retrace my steps. Okay, so this looks good. So now Here's my new one. It's a derivative of the previous one. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit.
And this will be approached in the same way. Isometric projection gets a little bit, takes a little bit of time to get down, but once you get it, it's pretty easy. So this one is a little bit busier. So there's my shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my depth. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to wrap this all the way around. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's my vertical. There's my horizontal. And I'm just going to continue this process all the way around until I make my way back to where I started at the base. Oh, and I got one tangent and I didn't plan it. And there we go. kind of ugly in here, but I don't care. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna create all of my, I'm gonna do all my horizontals all at the same time. Sometimes that's easier. Once I get this down. Now I can get all my 30 degree angles. There we go. Saw that ugly tangent in there, but it's at the very end of the drawing. And certainly at the end of the day, so I don't care. I'm kind of confused about Okay, go ahead. Ask. Um, how do you, when you do the mirror image, how do you keep the, the mirror image like, consistent throughout? Because I'm just having trouble like... Wrapping. Trying to wrap your head around it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll show you. Um, I'll do a... Hold on, let me let me get these two, and I'm I'm going to do a uh, a simple shape down here. I'll do a um, just a rectangular box. That'll make that'll make sense. Well, let me do a U. I'll do a U. So that is a that is a great question. Okay, so I have like this U shape, and I need to create um, these 30 degree angles. So you understand the 30 degree, right? Okay. So let me let me add those in really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Okay, so it's determined by the base that you draw, or the initial the initial uh, plane that you draw. So in these, I actually drew the plane first. Actually, I think I drew this plane first, but I'll draw the base first. So there's that base. Okay, so you understand that part, right? Okay, so that's e that's the easy part. Actually, that is probably the most challenging part is deciding. How, how deep in the space you make that. So from here, I drew the opposite of this front. Now I'm gonna go counterclockwise. You can go clockwise if you want to, but I'll go clockwise. So I drew the opposite of this horizontal. Now I'm gonna draw the opposite, the backside of this vertical, which starts at this corner. So you kind of imagine if you're inside of this box and you just wrap your way around it. So now from here, which is the opposite of this, I need to create this, the opposite of this one, which is here. So that in itself determines how thick it is. So you don't want to start on one side and then go to the other. You pretty much go here and you just keep wrapping your way around it, wrapping your way around it. So now I have this vertical here that I need to create a mirror image of, or the backside of, which now I can go down. And so now I found myself at the opposite of this corner, and now I need to, I can see that I need to create a horizontal and do this. So now I can just continue this process all the way around. And let me fix this mistake really quick. Not really a mistake, I just overdrew this line. There we go. And now, if I've done everything right, I'm back where I started. Okay. Jerry, you good? So as I said before, you have two simplified ones. Uh, once you know, obviously, it could get in progressively, uh, getting progressively, not progressively worse, but progressively challenging. And so this next one is going to be 
very challenging. And this one is gonna be a little bit, this one is gonna be slightly different than the rest. Um, so let me, allow me to create it. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly what I have, but there is a feature in it that you must have in your drawing. So again, allow me to create this really quick. Okay, so here's my new one. I'm going to erase what I don't need. And this is the very last one I'm going to do. So you have to have a minimum of three. Progressively getting more challenging. So you can really uh, push yourself. So we have verticals and horizontals. But there's a feature that's going to be added to this. That, uh, and the feature is something that everybody must do. Now you can make the shape as complex as, as I said, as complex as you want it, but it must have this feature. <clears throat> okay, so here's the feature. <clears throat> 